Chapter 1. A Farm for Sale The telephone gave a long, loud ring. Supper was over. Benny Alden was going through the hall. He answered it. Telephone, Grandfather! shouted Benny. It's for you. Long distance. Mr. Alden came to the telephone and said, Hello? Oh, yes. Then he said nothing for a long, long time. Benny and his sister Violet couldn't help listening. At last, Grandfather said, That's just fine, Jane. It's Aunt Jane, Violet whispered to Benny. Benny nodded, and a smile spread over his face. Just wonderful, Jane, said Grandfather again. Yes, I do. Yes, I think it is a fine idea. Yes, Jane. I'll think it over and call you very soon. No, Jane, I won't be long. Maybe a day or two. Yes, I know you like to do things fast. You are like Benny. Grandfather winked at Benny. At last, Grandfather said, Goodbye, Jane. See you soon. See you soon, said Benny. Are we going out west to see Aunt Jane again? No, she is coming here, said Mr. Alden. Oh, my, my, said Benny. Yes, that's what I say, too, said Grandfather. Oh, my, my, my. Now you four children get together and we'll talk this over. Benny, you find Henry. And I'll get Jessie, said Violet. She's up in her room. The four Aldens, two girls and two boys, lived with their grandfather in a big house. Henry was in college. Jessie was a senior in high school, and Violet was just ready for high school, too. Benny still went to grade school. In a few minutes, the four young Aldens were sitting with Mr. Alden in his den. Grandfather looked around and smiled. This is the big news, he said laughing. Aunt Jane wants to come east to live in New England again. She wants me to buy a farm for her right away quick. Quick like a fox, said Benny. Right, said Grandfather. He laughed again. Why does she want to move? asked Jessie. She has such an exciting place to live on Mystery Ranch. Well, you see, Jane and I were born in New England on a farm, said Mr. Alden. We all moved to the West. I should say Jane was about 18 when we went. I was younger than Jane. After a while, I wanted to come back and go into business. But Jane wouldn't. She said she would stay and run the ranch alone. Stubborn, said Benny. I remember, said Jessie. That is what made the trouble between you and Aunt Jane. Yes, she was too proud to give in. She found she couldn't run the ranch alone, so she almost starved to death. Wasn't it lucky we went out there when she was sick? said Violet. We found such a lovely aunt. Well, yes, she is lovely now, said her grandfather, smiling. Now I am going to surprise Jane. Maybe I can buy the very farm where we used to live. She would like that. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? cried Jessie. We could go up to the farm and get everything ready. Do you suppose we'll have to get chairs and tables and beds? We could get in food and make the beds. We'd love to do that. What fun that would be, said Violet. Her eyes were very bright. When are you going to try, Grandfather? asked Benny. Well, my boy, I'm going to surprise you, too. I'm going to start this very minute. It's only just after supper. Benny hugged Watch, the dog, and jumped up and down with him. Watch did not like this very well, but he loved Benny, so he did not make any fuss. Now, just hand me that telephone, Henry, said Mr. Alden. Whose number are you going to call? asked Benny. How do you know what to call? I don't, said Mr. Alden, but he made a call just the same. He called the village store. Nobody will be in the store as late as this, said Henry. Don't be too sure, said Mr. Alden. In the old days, the storekeeper lived in the store. Maybe he still does. Sure enough, a loud voice answered. The children could hear every word. Hello, said Grandfather. Are you the manager of the store? Well, I guess so, came the answer. It's my store. Do you know anything about the old Alden farm up on the hill? Do I? Of course I know the Alden farm up on the hill. I live right here in this town. Yes, I know. Do you know if the farm is for sale? Yes, tis. I must say tis. That farm is running down. Get it cheap. Furniture, too. Who is selling it? asked Grandfather. Well, I guess I am. Hasn't brought me any luck. Who wants to buy it? I do. I used to live there with my sister Jane when I was a boy. I am James Alden. Don't tell me, said the man. 
I remember Jane Alden well, and you too, I guess. Long time ago. And you want to buy that farm back? Yes, I do. Well, I'll make you a fair price. All the land and the house and the barn and the hen coops and the woodshed. Some furniture, too. Glad to get rid of it. I'll buy it, said Grandfather. What? cried the man. We can settle on the price when I see you, said Grandfather again. By the way, tell me your full name. Well, my name is Elisha Morse, but I'm so surprised I don't know my own name for sure. You coming here to live? No, but my sister Jane is. Well, well, well. This telephone call is costing you a lot of money. Better hang up. All right, said Grandfather. We'll be driving up soon to see my new farm. It ain't new. It's old, said the man. It's new to me. I just bought it, said Grandfather. Goodbye, and thank you. Grandfather leaned back and laughed. He hung up the telephone. Quick like a fox, Benny, he said. Is that what you wanted? Grandfather, you are simply wonderful, said Benny. Well, I had a bit of luck, I should say, said Mr. Alden. Everyone agreed, but it was Jesse, not Grandfather, who began to make plans right away.